What do I think you should be expanding or declining in? Things you like the most. Second can be the things that make most business sense. If you don't like it and you're doing it because it's the money, you fall into what people lost money on NFTs, people lost money on cannabis, people lost money on fashion brands. People chase the thing they think the money's in, but they don't actually like it or like it enough. Three, things you're good at or the people you have. Over and under expansion comes from two things. The subjective opinion and strategy of the founder. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And number two, the capacity of that founder to build family. Yeah. Right? And when I say build family, I mean, you know, you've gone too fast either because you're defining that as the things that have worked or not worked. Mm -hmm. You're defining that, thank you so much, Joe. You're defining that based on um, how you feel about your leadership, Mm. right? If you're feeling amazing about her, well then you're like, oh, the campaign agency's good. Mm. If you're not feeling great about and what he's doing over here, then it, then it's not going well. So for a lot of us in this room, in different, like what I like about this format is sometimes the advice hits for everyone. Every single person in this room's 100% variable of how much they can expand is completely predicated on their relationship with the people that are leading those subdivisions, those projects, those companies, those offices. And this is why I spend so much time talking about the people dynamics. So, you know, if I go back to that time or if I'm thinking about today, Mm. it's a very similar game, which is, A, how do I sit with people? Watch this. How long have you been here? Me? Yeah. 11 years. Nine. Yeah. Two. Yep. James? Eight and a half. Dust? Five. Yeah. Let's keep going, Maribel. Eight and a half. Right, like, yeah. and there's obviously newer people. Like, you're, but like, that's a lot of eight, nine, tens. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. And by agency standards, across this whole company, it's unheard of. Why? Because we really do focus on the relationship part of the people that work here, and it ebbs and flows. When I look at all of them, there's been different times when they've been overly busy, sometimes not as busy. Like, what I'm very good at is, somebody was talking to me the other day, who's been here for nine years, and literally saying they feel guilty because they don't feel like they've been productive for the last three. And I said, that has a lot to do with the way your first six worked. (laughs) <laughs> Five of your first six, you worked way too crazy. Mm-hmm. You were hungry, we were close enough that you were feeling, you didn't even realize we were working that much because it just felt fun. And I'm like, and then COVID happened and then different, you know, and again, like again, you know, ironically, actually Jesse, Joe, Maribel, James, they've all worked at VaynerMedia before Sasha. Those are different speeds, different things. They've had different roles. You know, we've talked about different, like, like there's so many different things going on. So I think a couple things. One, to answer you directly, what do you like doing the most? Is a very good, like if you're going into notes mode, number one, what, what do I think you should be expanding or declining in? Things you like the most. Mm-hmm. You personally, the things you like the most. Second can be the things that make most business sense. Mm-hmm. Almost everyone starts with business sense. Where's the most money? Mm-hmm. Where's the most opportunity? Mm-hmm. To me, I think that's important. But I always find when it's, when it's a human, all of the sizes that our companies are, if you don't like it and you're doing it because it's the money, you fall into what people lost money on NFTs, people lost money on, on cannabis, people lost money on fashion brands. People keep chasing the thing. People lose money on social media when they expand it. Like, people chase the thing they think the money's in, but they don't actually like it mm. or like it enough. So things you like the most, number two, Things where you see the business opportunity, it's still important to know the addressable market and how good is the opportunity. Three, things you're good at or the people you have that are good or the people you have, right? Like, one of the things that's very obvious to me is most leaders, when they start to expand, hire someone they think is good at the thing, but they themselves are not good at the thing. Killer, crushes people, (laughs) right? Because they don't even know how to judge the thing So those things stand out for me tremendously. Early on in the first three, four years of Vayner, I was very good at training up people. Then for five or six years, I got away from it because I was thinking about, not that I would, not that I cared any less about it, I felt a couple things happened. There was enough people around to do osmosis, plus I was trying to learn other things and bringing in other capabilities. Then, four years ago, I'm like, wait a minute, we're not good at social media. 
<laughs> which would make everyone be surprised here, and not like you're not good at social media, I mean by my standards, yeah. that there was a big <laughs> delta. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's, that's exactly right. the thing. We were growing, but we were growing because we're competing with a world that's really bad at social media. <laughs> and I realized that the delta between me and the companies was so great I've even, you know, as Jane knows, for the last year, Sasha team, one big thing right now is that Vayner over COVID for three years really got its shit together, and now I'm like, hey, Sasha, I wanna get our shit together. Like, so, you know, one thing you need to do is, a couple things. Don't get crippled by the company not being as good at the craft as you are. Figure out how good the company is at the craft compared to the other things that companies could hire. I wasn't judging Vayner Media against Gary V. I was judging Vayner Media against Droga 5, against Social Code, against its competitive set. Sometimes a founder has ego wrapped up in their own capabilities and it cripples them because they think the machine is not executing to their level. My words. <laughs> but, but, you're, but you're not comparing the machine compared to the other machines. Yeah. You know, there's a really good chance that I'm one of the true best people at social media. And like, a lot of data supports that. I can't expect 2,000 people to be doing it as well, plus, this, plus they can't do it as well. The clients aren't letting us. Right. So there's a lot of that, right? So, so I, think, I think that's a framework that you need to get comfortable with. Don't compare it against what you want the work quality to be. Compare it against the alternatives of what they could be doing with that same money. Mm -hmm. And that always gave me peace of mind because boy oh boy are people really bad at social media as agencies and especially creative agencies trying to do it. And even like standalone social media agencies, really the truth is the people that are really good at it are doing it for themselves, not doing it for clients. Mm -hmm. I was weird in that I had a crazy big vision that I was like, I felt that I could do both and I ended up being right, but even in my earliest days, I'm like, well, I should just do this for myself. Mm-hmm. But I knew that I wanted to build this massive machine, mainly on the back that I knew I was gonna have relationships with people for a long time and felt I could. I think the biggest vulnerability is that the, as everybody on earth that doesn't live in this exact city <laughs> has, a, has a feeling that they're not, like even in the, like, even like, even big places like San Francisco and LA and Chicago have inferiority complex to New York. Yeah. That's America. You start getting into places like, I get 100 emails a year. I'm the third biggest in Poland, but it sucks. I feel scared, too small. <laughs> and I'm like, and I always try to tell those, and I'm excited to tell you this. Until you have fucking 50% market share of Austria, yeah. don't talk to me about this place is too small. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, people love to say, my country's too small, Gary. I'm like, you do point zero 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 one percent of the business in your country. <laughs> <laughs> and so they get so fixated on the ideology that they're in a smaller country without realizing like, you could do 20 times more business. You should focus on the most profitable product you can sell to people based on the realities of the budget in your marketplace mm-hmm. that is also something you feel good about. Yeah. If you can't create a business, it's why the Sasha Group exists. Your question is actually answered in the meta of us even being in this room. Yeah. Too, so many people were coming to VaynerMedia that looked more like us, because I'm us, mm much more than Pepsi and Starbucks, that I was like, we're saying no to everybody because I couldn't make the math work. Okay, cool, thanks for reaching out. Do you have $500,000 a year minimum to get out of bed? All of you are like, no, I'll keep watching your videos. <laughs> and then my brain's like, this is stupid. Like, let's figure out how to create a company that does provide value for 5,000 bucks or 50,000 bucks or 100,000 bucks. And so we built something from scratch. You can do the same thing. Your fourth company could be the one that actually is more in tune with the actual budgets of Austria mm. or you could expand your services to Germany, which is a much bigger market. Sure. You could. Yeah. It just depends on you. Yeah. I keep going back to people because the reason you're not in Germany in a big way competing at the highest levels is you need teammates that can hold it down in Germany. Mm-hmm. Or you need to move to Germany. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but those become the real options. Make sense? Absolutely. So it's one of two. You either understand, okay, I need to build family. Mm. And then I feel comfortable sending someone to Germany because you can't keep, you can't have, I I learned a lot of great things in my dad's store. Like, the people who were at the register, you needed to kind of trust. Mm. Right, so if you're you're gonna fucking open an office in Germany, the reason you haven't, or I haven't, is I don't have the, you know, one of the things I keep trying to build scale, like, 
Maribel doesn't even notice. I'm like, the other day in a meeting, literally, this is real talk. I said to Marcus, I'm like, you think Maribel would leave America? Because we're thinking about expansion. And this is like a real, I know I'm funny and I say personal stuff out loud, I'm sorry, but <laughs> did they reach out to you already? James me, man. <laughs> yeah, like, right, you know, right? They, James. So, James knows that everyone's in play at every moment. He's happy to hold on to you as long as possible. Yeah. Right, they talked to you, right, Maribel? They did, right? Yeah, yeah Marcus, like, these are like, so why? because I know I'm family with Maribel. We've, I, she was close to me when she worked in proper Vayner for three years. Then she worked directly for me in the office CEO. We really got close during that time. We talk, we, we talk now the way I talk to like Brandon or my mom. I don't talk to her every day, but we're talking. Even looks in the office. That lets me say, would Maribel move to Columbia? Like, like, like these are like real things you can say to yourself that are real. Yeah. You can't do that if you don't have family. I can't do that. Yeah. We haven't had the time for me to be able to do that with, you know, like, you know what I mean? Absolutely. But, you know, but he did go to Tennessee. Yeah. Like from New York, like grew up in Jersey, like in New York, and we're like, we're opening up, and he, he actually went, for how long, four? Seven years. Seven. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> this is why everyone here is completely limited. Yeah. Completely based on how much they built family. Yeah. Family. You can't grow because you're too scared. You're too smart. You won't take the risk because you don't know. You know you won't know who that person is. So, what I would do right now for every business here is build as many teammates that are forever as possible from day one. Mm -hmm. Hire a kid off the street for twelve bucks an hour, like to be like making some like be like you want to be here for uh, San Francisco twenty bucks an hour, like to you know to to, you know you, you, you you. from, and you know this, some of you know this, you know like, I'm weird, day one I'm like, you gonna be here forever? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I know you don't know how to answer that yet, but do you want to be? Are you that kind of person? If you don't want to be, that's amazing. I'm not trying to get you to say yes. Yeah. I'm just trying to get into your mind and see what kind, like, and so, yeah. and you know what happens after time is then people start seeing things happen. People saw him go and be a leader in that company. People saw these all go mm-hmm. to Sasha, and it, people saw Nate and Trouty, who were like, inter- both started as interns, become my partner in a wine brand. And people start to see things, then everyone believes you. They don't believe. By the way, nobody believed me at first. Mm -hmm. Not one person, I was like, they didn't believe me, and that's okay, and expect them to believe me. But they believe me now. Mm. And that's what you want to start building from day one. That is your limiter. First of all, thank you for everything. I've been following you since 2013. Um, Humbled. You definitely helped me navigate a lot. We have a similar story. I wasn't a good student, started off in high school, airbrushing t-shirts, literally in my grandfather's garage. Um, built a wooden spin print press, all of that. Now Love it. Doing executions with the Warriors. And it's cra- you, it's right. crazy, right? It's crazy. I mean, just from the ground up of just doing and learning. So that's how I've always been. Same. I, I guess my question is around infrastructure. So I, I took a step back from, I used to make a lot of content. I had our in-house manufacturing facility, did all screen printing right across the street from Tesla, did a lot of stuff with that. Realized I was miserable. Good for you. So in 2016, 2017, I sold the manufacturer and I went into, I'm like, we're more of like a creative agency. Right. Where we want to. You tapped into what you liked. Yeah, exactly. And and the merchandise part, we liked that, but it was a piece of it. It wasn't the whole thing. Right. You didn't have to do that part. Right, exactly. And so I realized, oh, we can partner. Got you. And ever since we did that, everything kind of. Got better. Worked out. Good for you. And so. Notice how it started with him knowing what he liked. So, so many people at the table are doing shit they don't like, but it's just still making a million bucks. They're still doing, it's killing people. Keep going. And that transition was hard because I all super hard to print t-shirts and that's how I made my money. So it was a a leap of faith and it was hard in the first couple of years, Um, but we slowly built built it. Um, I took a step back from making content. I would do videos and stuff like that. And in 2019, I had my daughter, (laughs) first kid. Good for you. I realized like all the content that I was putting out was to like, Kind of for validation, more flexing. So, yeah, exactly. Yep. So I took a step back, and I have not put out any content in yep. any time. Built the infrastructure of the business, got it into a really good place, and so now you feel like you're ready to come back. Yeah, good for you. So we're we're looking to launch a company called Doing Everything Different, a media company that's basically all the stuff that our agency does, but from a brand standpoint, so not an agency standpoint. So um, brand consulting, media uh, collaborations, and products. I understand. And so looking at how we want to scale that up, and I'm just wondering just from a... From a and you see a path where your personal brand can be a lead gen to launching it and getting business development. For sure, 100%. That's good. And it brings some stuff to the world because I think that from 
my experience and how I grew up and the stuff that I learned. You're gonna do for people what I did for 100%. you. That's right. And that's that's a hundred percent what is a motivator. Like what you Not to mention when that little girl grows up, it's gonna be cool for her to see her dad's con. Yeah, 100%. my kids are starting to get to the place where I'm like, oh my god, yeah. all that shit I used to talk about ten years ago is about to become true. <laughs> you know, right. you know. And it's so. So what's the? I got you. Yeah, yeah. So I think just infrastructure, right? So like, what do you need to pull that off? Yeah, and and, and how do we just? We're the agent. We're, we have never really like done that internally. So I'm just wondering how you set up the different departments. Like, what does that? What does it, it look? Really, like? it's somebody who. There's multiple things you can go about a bunch of different ways. A couple things. One, if I'm you. You're trying to put your, like one thing that's amazing for me is I live my life and content comes from it. Like I don't, I'm not really a content producer. It's why I'm not, I can be four times bigger on TikTok if I, if I was a full-time content producer. TikTok's such a specific platform where I can't get away with the shit I got away with on Instagram and Facebook where it's just the videos. You gotta kinda do it and I don't have that time. This is what I do for a living. But, but you can absolutely build up a couple ways. One. Going on small podcasts to interview you is a killer. It will crush. Like, because you're just doing it anyway and then you're just post-producing from the content. You need somebody who can do design and video. That could be one and or two people, right? You need somebody who really cares to know a little bit about the platforms. Like, you really need to know and look, everything I'm about to say could be five people, it could be one person. It's hard to find one supernova. But to win in this game, you have to produce it, so you have to make it. Mm. Film, post-produce it, make the images, right? So Photoshop or Final Cut, right? Like, you know, you need someone who understands the platforms, the platform strategy, like knowing that green screens work or posting three times a day, or like, today, you know, Dustin, you know this, in our thread, someone on the team said, Gary, we're testing. Using the word quit versus the word stop is making your content do way better. <laughs> We call this the S in sock, strategic organic content. So good news, the best part about starting now versus three years ago, organic content's back. You're one TikTok away, one Instagram away, right? So you know, three years ago it was hard. You had to build followers and be like, fuck, that's a grind. You had to pay ads. Now your content can be seen and can explode on one post. Harder, I was yelling and screaming about TikTok four years ago, now it's supply and demand, it's harder. But YouTube shorts, you know, Facebook, Facebook Reels is incredible, YouTube Shorts, they're gonna go through a lot of this over the weekend. What I would say is, for you personally, based on me making some assumptions of the size of the business, kids that you're putting on at minimum wage that actually care about making this content. Every small business needs to drive down the cost of creative. For me, the way you drive down the cost of creative is you put kids on who are thrilled to get paid minimum wage, not kids who are like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. There's groups that are thrilled, there's groups that are fuck you, you as a business have to find the group that's thrilled. And it's always good for a street kid, because you're not worried about them going to Stanford. You know that you made it from the street, then you know anyone can do the same. Plus so many kids want this job, but it's platform, it's creative, and then it's putting you in a position to make output. This is a big one. This is why I want you to do podcasts because it made you make four pieces of content. Four D's, this, this project exists because I want the content. Mm. Mm-hmm. This is not ROI positive for me. Mm. It's not. But it's ROI positive when I magnify. Mm-hmm. Got it? Yep. Same for you. You're busy. So you got to figure out, you know, do you want to do the office and have one person who's an intern just film your whole company and you're just putting out shit on fucking YouTube? You could. Yeah, I think I, we have the the team in place to be able to do it for right now that we're setting up. It's more so of like, from a standpoint of platforms that you use to communicate, is it all through text thread, is it through Slack? Like, oh, with each other? Yeah, from an from Oh, that's, that's fucking choice of like, I hate structure. Yeah. <laughs> because I think people <laughs> fall in love with the structure over the output. So our team runs on WhatsApp. Mm, okay. The whole team. I mean, they've got their own shit. What else do you fucking use, Asana? Slack. No, no, Dustin, what, what else do you guys Slack. use? Slack. Slack. I don't even fuck, like, <laughs> speed. And I always think like, you got such a small company. Yeah. Let them talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Let them work and talk. 
<laughs> and how do you build that from a standpoint? Because everybody's remote now. You like that? And we went from having an office to everybody kind of all over the place. We did a team offsite recently. That. Dude, I'm thinking, you know, honestly, bro, this is the biggest thing I'm worried about is the following. It is now crystal clear to me that, and we have so many because we've grown so much, that every 24 year old that works here, AKA two years out of school, been working here for two years, is super behind people five years ago, two years in. They're losing out on osmosis in the office. And it's not even close. And I'm fucked up because I want to make it good for them. But I know if I come down with like five days a week in the office, they're like, you are a fucking tyrant. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, what do I do with this shit? Because it's so crystal clear to me that the osmosis of the office was teaching them. I mean, kids are way behind. Like, there's some smart kids in my company that I can see that I'm like, oh shit. Like, everything's a meeting now. Yeah. It takes you two weeks to do a meeting when you used to be like, yo, can you explain this to me? Okay, good. Like, so, yeah. couple things. How big are you? About 20 people. You know, you, if I wish I had 20 because I'd start the path on, <laughs> no really, I wish I had 20 because I'd start on the path of like, hey, six month warning, back in the office. You're not about that life, let's talk. But like, cool, five of you are not, I'm gonna rehire those five positions. Cause I think at 20, it matters. Or you go on Zoom full time, everyone's on the whole time. You gotta find, like I've been thinking a lot about like mandating everybody on the team being on the same stream, non-meeting, in Zoom so they can talk. Like literally unmute and be like, yo, John, can you help me real quick? And they go off and like, I gotta figure out either to force back people in seats in serendipity or created virtually because the non-serendipity moments, mm. hit on Slack, set up a meeting, next Tuesday, what the fuck? Yeah. Next Tuesday was two seconds. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for me it's hard, I have thousands and it's like a whole corporate to do. Right. For you at 20, you know, of that 20, if they're working like the rest of the world, half already know they want to be back together. Yeah, it says everybody's all over the place now. Especially I, get it. I get it, I get it, I get it, I got it. Then put everybody, at 20, I would put everybody on a Zoom. Yeah. If you work nine to five, you're on Zoom nine to five. <coughs> In the background. Try it, yeah. try it for, try it. Um, otherwise it gets really hard. You can do it at Discord too. Yeah, Discord, mm -hmm. Discord could be good. Yeah. Just use technology to try to create osmosis is the real North Star. All right, let's keep going. Yep. Nick. Oh, cool, cool. I just, at that point, I remember the first time I ever came to this office that James bought me here and you had people sitting in the stairway because they couldn't get the desk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was, and like the buzz and the osmosis yeah, that matters. Crazy. And like, like people complain about things that they're creating for themselves. Like literally, Gary, I'm, not, I'm feeling lonely. I'm like, come to the office. <laughs> but, I, the, but, the, but the commute, I'm like, okay, what, what do I do with that? Help me here. You're lonely, but you don't want to commute. Like, like I'm not a genie, you know? So basically, just a quick background, I started my business back in 1981 out of my parents' basement. Mom um, was in the printing business, typesetting, you know, yep. servicing other printers, and yep. things like that. Grew it to a small uh, printing business, then grew it to an agency. So that's kind of the short form of, yep. of, of my trajectory. And at where I am now today, and I'm looking at all the things that are going on, and you know, and, and I talked to James about the situation, I said, what is it? for me in order, obviously everybody's looking at scaling their business and how do I get bigger and all of those other pieces, but I wanna know about telling the story as it relates to social media because I was, I was really kind of outside of it because I'd been in business for a while and I was moving along, you know, paying my bills and I, you know, people work for me and I'm okay, I'm comfortable, I go on trips, I do what I wanna do, <laughs> you know, it's I all know. good, it's all good. I know. And I say to myself, well, wait a minute, now I am at this point in my career and I'm like, no, 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 Either you're gonna think about how, when you're gonna retire or you're gonna start pushing this thing and putting your foot on the accelerator. Not so to, me not to, to mention, not to mention <laughs> yeah. the longer you stay out of it, the more market share you lose. Mm -hmm. There's also that part. Yeah. <laughs> Most assuredly. So I was very excited about this because I'm really looking, I, I understand about storytelling, but I wanna understand if there is a formula to that storytelling as it relates to social media. Well let's talk about what, what would you, let's go even more raw. What would you like to accomplish, more customers? Uh, certainly more customers, um, more quality customers. 
customers. Of course. Right? More quality customers. But yes, more customers in order to grow the business and then of course to scale the business. Of course. You know, just obviously my objective too is to scale a business for sale. Of course. Okay, I mean, I've already sold a business, one of my other businesses yep. before, so I know what that's like yep. for people who go their entire life and not figure yep. out how to sell a business. Yep. Um, so I know how that works and I understand the formula of that, but there's also pieces I want to do after. You know what I mean? You know, consulting and things of that nature. Right, so the bigger you build your personal profile, the more likely you can sit on a board or consult or things of that nature. Perfect, there you go, bingo. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. My intuition is you need to think about the format I did with Ask Gary Vee and T with Gary Vee. Your biggest strength by a country mile is 1981. Hmm. You can't fade experience, Hmm. right? Like. You know, it's when you think about a world of competitive options, you, one of your biggest competitive leverage points is being in business for 40 years for yourself is being in business for 40 years for yourself. And that's really hard to, you know? And so, you know, I think a couple things. Where are we at with LinkedIn? Anywhere yet? Have we even started this journey? Yo, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have I started? Tell yeah. what you know is that, that some of your old contacts found. Yeah, basically how I've been using LinkedIn because I've been in business for so long. My objective of using LinkedIn was slightly different than other people. Of course. Of course. I'm just looking to reconnect with the thousands of people I already know, (laughs) okay, who can come to me and say, hey, Vic, I'm like, holy shit, I forgot about you. I saw you on LinkedIn. This happens to me now all the time. Of course. I saw you on LinkedIn. Oh my God, I need you for this particular Vic, have you have you gone down and like sat down and gone through your phone and your email contacts and like sat with like a beverage of your choice for like a full day together with your team. I'm gonna be Grand Manier, but go ahead. Respect. <laughs> so have you sat down with Grand Manier on the rocks and said, have you gone through your phone from A to Z and gone through it and then linked up with the people on LinkedIn? Only in pieces. So Good. Only so pieces. straight up, yeah, only pieces. super enjoy, I, lo- I love the time of year we're in. Immediately. I need you to act as if you took a personal day or went on vacation mm-hmm. and take an entire full day or two, mm-hmm. a Thursday and Friday, mm-hmm. and literally go from A to Z on your phone and from A to Z on your Google or your mail, you know how if you just type it, like, <laughs> right. I literally want you to have another tab open and connect, just connect with every single person on LinkedIn. Because what's gonna happen is eight to 20% of those people are gonna link back with you. But all of them, because you've connected with them, have a higher likelihood of seeing your content. Hmm. The S and SOC. Mm -hmm. Got it? Got it, got it. That's cool, that's just a little sidebar that everyone here should do. (laughs) But that, but see. How often are you posting on LinkedIn? For right now, we're doing three days a week. I did a little bit of research on that. They say the best days to post is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We tried, we, we kind of ping pong back and forth. We did five days a week, but I noticed that his reach decreased. Um, per post? Yes. But what about net? Hmm. Now, it's, it's, it's increased. Um, net. So one of the things that, yeah, one of the things that people make a mistake on is they're like, oh, I'm getting 700 views per post now. When I was doing five days a week, I was doing 500 posts. I'm like, right, but one is 2,500 views and one's 2,100 views if you go three times seven versus five times five. Mm. Just do a quick look on what happened with net. The other thing is what I really want for all of you is to get to the content that does well to inform your content going forward. So I'm less worried about how well each individual piece goes for all of you. I want you to take more at bats to be better at it. So right now what's happening is too many people are trying to be cute and like higher quality, less quantity, because it, deep down, because it's easier. <laughs> like, because it's work, it's hard. You got other things, I get it. I'm not yes. judging. But I'm trying to tell everybody, you're all trying to get better at tennis and if you practice five days a week instead of three days a week, you'll be better at tennis in 24 months. One of the things I'm concerned about is when people go with that model is they're not doing enough pieces of content to figure out the thing that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't posting as often, I don't know if I would've gotten into a lot of the content I got into because I wouldn't have the feedback loop from all the content. So what, you know, one of the things you all need is to post about more shit. So like, it's not just like the journey of branding, it might also be like the post that might change your business is what it feels like to be a girl dad. What did really well was therapy. I did how therapy can change your business and it like, 
Yeah. Go figure, yeah. right? Like for you, it's storytelling. And that's and you, when you, you said know, story, you, like you posted here, something from when I first one of my businesses that I started years ago is on Home Shopping Network. I started this yep. poetry business. Yep. And Channel Two News did an interview. Yep. Well, I was able to dig it up and post from, it. And, yeah. Interview. And we yes. and we actually digitized because yep. it was on a free. I got it. You know, yeah. VHS. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> you know, and we able to and posted it. You have no idea how many people reached out. Of Holy course, shit, Vic, you had black hair, and you know. <laughs> Vic, Vic, the other thing, the other thing you haven't done is you haven't played with it, so you posted it. What about doing a split screen like I do, where you play 13 seconds from it and then do two minutes of your observation of it? Right. You know what would be a mate? One of the things I love about having a library is in 20 years making content where I'm telling you what was in my mind at the time or what I didn't tell you at the time or couldn't tell you at the time or didn't understand at the time. Mm-hmm. So I also think story time with you would be huge. As someone who has like gift of gab and like I sense your energy, just what I would do if I were you is I would tell stories of big mistakes. Notice it. Well, that's no, a life. <laughs> but like I love telling the story of passing on Uber twice because I overextended myself on an apartment and see the one time I overextended myself and didn't live my thesis. It bit me in the ass because I would have made 500 million on Uber if I invested normally like I always did. Like you. You've got plenty of stories of the, th- and I'll get, sure. I've always wanted, and I'm probably at that point in my career, and you definitely are. I think the best series that an OG can do is 20 part series on things I said no to that cost me. Because mm-hmm. most business people say no too much. Right. And so, like, if you can think about, like, and like, this is where it gets fun. This is where maybe, like, Two, two grand maniers on the rocks make you remember shit you forgot about. Yep. Like, you know, like, you know what I think a lot about? I think a lot about the meetings I didn't take and how they could have been the meeting. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just don't even know, but sometimes you do know. <laughs> so and so like, there's some things to talk about there. Yeah, okay, that's fantastic, right. thank you. You got it. All right, um, So, so far, lots of great Nuggets. things to cipher through. Um, so my background is I was a footwear designer for 17 years. Um, I've worked for Beyonce, I've worked for Kenneth Cole, I've done all this great product and actually uh, Joe's wife is uh, in the footwear biz as well. Um, and so coming up with this company, um, my joke is always that I have a landfill out there with my name on it. I was building all this great product, I was building product for Costco and Payless and Marshalls and TJ Maxx and I found myself in this position of like, what now? Like, I've been doing this for so long and I'm not feeling passionate about it anymore and Happy Circumstance ended up in a master's for sustainability and had a task rabbit come to my apartment. They helped me go through my closet and they pulled out this bag and they're like, what is this? And I was like, oh, that's alterations I have to do. And they're like, are you gonna do them? And I was like, ah. And <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I ended up donating them and I, I looked back at that and I'm like, wait, hold on. Like. I'm literally in a master's for sustainability. I love fashion and that bag probably had the best things in my closet that I had a story for to tell and I wasn't telling it. And so I started asking people, well, do you have a bag in the back of your closet? And and it was either the trunk of a car, the back of a closet, um, and Kate's one of our customers and for her and and I was part of that luminary um, community. And so we started seeing this opportunity that every single person here has something in their closet that something is wrong with. Whether it's a tear or a button, anything. So how do we solve that problem? So for the customers, I've I've asked you that question. So smart. Thank you. For small businesses, you have mom and pop shops who are being totally, you know, broken by this technology that's helped air and, and travel and all these things, but they're left behind. So my question is gonna be small brands, customers, Brands, easy. We're taking their budget dollars for sustainable initiatives and effectively using them to badge them with local tailors. So Macy's, you buy something in New York, but let's say you bought it online and you live in Kentucky, how are they connecting you with a tailor or a cobbler in your location that you can connect with? And so finally, the planet. We, you know, If you can extend the life of your clothes by just a few months, you can actually increase your, you decrease your carbon footprint by 20 to 30%. All that to say, I have these four main stakeholders, and I love them all so much, and we're about to start our pre-seed fundraise, 
and I, my co-founder, her background's engineering, consulting, she's worked for luxury brands and data and analytics, and I'm the, I talk for a long time, and I love what I do, and I'm so happy and excited. Um, how do I most effectively speak to these four stakeholders, speak to investors, and create that roadmap for them? Because like my real vision is reinvigorating the industry through certifications and trainings and making it so sexy to repair and revive your wardrobe that we're actually taking these tail these designers out of school who are absolutely like, I literally had no idea this is what designing was and giving them the opportunity to work directly with people and learn from these like skilled artisans who are not passing down their, their work. Understood. With the purpose in the short term to raise capital? Yes. <laughs> so um, I think that in the short term, there's only two ways that you would do that. One is go bananas on you being the face of the brand and doing content. Or two, you going through an exercise similar to the last one of, I do not think business people realize that almost all the gold is in their iPhone contacts from A to Z. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really wild to me. Like when I think about, notice how like you just gave a beautiful like statement. That's and the nicest thing anyone's ever said. No, it's, re it's, re like, <laughs> yeah. it's the reason I gave you the answer of maybe you should be making a lot of content. I think it would go well. Yeah. But notice how when I got to speak after all of that, I just went right to the punchline, mm -hmm. which is like, right now you need capital. Mm -hmm. And so I go to, yes, I could tell you to start making unlimited TikToks and LinkedIn and in seven months you'd probably get inquiries. Mm -hmm. Or I could literally ask you to make a video or six so they're not all the same and be like, hey friend, I'm actually texting this to about 20, 30 of my friends on my cell phone to tell you like what I'm up to. Uh, if, you, if you give me three minutes, just watch this. And you make like four different versions because obviously from A to Z, you have the people you talk to often. Then you have tier two. Then you have tier three they haven't talked to in six months to a year, but you kind of know. Mm -hmm. And then you have tier four, you're like, I'm not even sure if I know this person, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You kind of need to make a video for all of them. And literally, what's your Grand Marnier? Water, <laughs> wine, coffee, what do you drink? Depends on the day. Fair enough. <laughs> Same. Literally, it beca if you're raising capital, I think it's in your phone. Mm. I, li like literally. Follow up question. Please. Um, I have been building this brand for the last. I apologize two for years. a second. And so for like all of you, literally the video is like, and again, four groups, homies, kind of homies, <laughs> know them pretty solid, but haven't talked in a year. Mm -hmm have no fucking idea who this is. <laughs> and making four different videos, and literally for you, it's like, hey, I'm just doing business development, hope you've been well. Like, because remember, the first 13 seconds for those four groups are gonna be very different. Yeah. Hey, the fourth one, <laughs> hey, how you been? <laughs> just doing some karma out here. Want, you know, wanna tell you what I've been up to, and what I want, which is I want some customers on my shit. Hit me back with what you're up to, maybe I can help you, just some karma. That's gonna land <laughs> versus, you know, versus your first group where the text would be like, hey, I made this video for like my 25 closest friends, watch it. Because you know you can get away with that with that video. Anyway, keep going. So I've been building this for the last couple of years and luckily I like thrive in the awkward and I'm ha like I have a, the goldfish memory, like I keep going. But what we built was a mobile tailoring company and what we saw was that it's really labor intensive and asset heavy. And so I've always thought of it like I have a quota to reach with with my friends and I, through the pandemic, we built a New York City face mask initiative. We built, we made 40,000 masks for frontline providers using tailors because we were supposed to launch the company on March 20th, 2020. Um, but it, it was really, it was an amazing, like, of course. I would change day, your, yeah. of, ha of yeah, like, happiness. what is this community and mm -hmm. the family I've built. Here's the interesting thing that now I finally, I'm like, I get it. I know what I'm doing and I feel like I've, Tap, like, You've tapped everyone. Wanna, yeah, and I, I don't want to annoy people, but I also am like, no, I've got it now. Come back. Tell them the truth. Make different videos. You know that your best homie, you've actually like truly cried wolf, not only on this project, but through the years. And so that person's got to hear something different than me who met you once at a conference and you have my info. Mm -hmm. Like, here's the bottom line. What's the alternative? Yeah. Like, as long as you're empathetic in your communication, look, everything, that is, any time I've ever wanted to sell anything, when Empathy launched, when I had books, V Friends, 
I go into the rare occasion of empathetic sales mode. And I go into a cocoon, sometimes a 20 hour flight. I've actually gone to our Asia office once because I had to work for 10 straight hours and didn't think I could do it any other way besides taking a flight to Asia. (laughs) That's how hard it is to sometimes get into the zone for some of us. Other people, I really put, I've never done this. Actually, that's not true. When I had to do V Friends, I knew that I had to draw 250 people. I literally rented, uh, actually, that's not true. Uh, one of Mona's friends had a house in Malibu and was like, come and stay. And I went for a week with five or six of the crew and just drew, mm. just was creative. This is the biggest thing you're working on. You have to go off the grid and ask everybody from A to Z. Again, in context. Maybe for you it's 700 videos because every one of the people you've annoyed needs their own individual. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. And that's okay? Yeah. Because here's my question. What's the alternative? This is the worst fundraising market we've had yeah. in forever. Yeah. The end. You're not gonna, it's so hard to raise capital. If you're gonna raise capital, the terms are gonna be obnoxiously bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have the option of getting a huge waste of time with bullshit VCs that won't give you the money anyway. Right. Or you go back to the well, but, you go, but notice, maybe you've been on the kick of group one and two, You never know in group three and four. I mean, when I tell you in my group one, and I'm a giver, I've had people who I've like changed their, I'll just paint you a very clear picture. When I go to sell books, I've had people in group four that I've talked to once, forget about me being Gary Vee, I'll take it back seven or eight years ago, where I was like, Gary Vee, but like not this Gary Vee, right? Like nobody did it because I was cool. They kind of knew me a little something. I had people who I barely knew, bought 50 books, just because they're like me and they're on some karma shit and they're like, I got you. I had people in group one who I got them. I went, one person, as you can see, the passion's coming through. <laughs> one person I went to bat for on an investment reopened the funding round to get them in. It was closed. I put like, I went out of my way. Mm-hmm. He put in 50K and made $13 million on that exit and he bought zero books. Yeah. And I was, and when I tell you, I'm still very friendly with the person that doesn't even register. Yeah. I go into empathy, like maybe he was busy, maybe he didn't see it, I did hit him up four times. Uh, <laughs> because I thought it was, because I thought it was gonna be a big one, because like this man made a lot of money, he's gonna buy a thousand books, like I really took it, like, you know. And, 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 you know, some people don't see the world the same way. Like yeah. I was mortified when I found out six years into traveling that you're supposed to leave a tip for people at the hotel. Mm. That was one of the worst days of my life. In my entire life, one of the worst days was somewhere around mid thirties, somehow I don't even remember now, I was like, what? You know, because I didn't grow up traveling, I didn't know. I didn't, I never heard of it, I didn't know. It was like the worst feeling ever in my stomach because I was very passionate about tipping and I just, sometimes you don't know the etiquette. Mm. Yeah. Like, you know, so like, I was like, well, who am I to judge this person? I didn't know that every time I was in a hotel I should leave something, I just didn't know. I knew if for a driver, I knew for someone taking out a package, I just didn't know. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't know if someone makes you $13 million, you should buy some books. <laughs> you know? um, this, why am I telling you that's so long-winded? You gotta reset and you gotta go with what's reality for you. And my one follow-up question again is in terms of accredited investors. So yes. I, I've done my research. Yep safe notes and this and yep. and what are you looking for? And that's the one thing is like if you want to end up in a VC and at some point we'll probably end up in like a circular VC for a circular economy, but we don't want to do it now. We want to do pre-seed, we want angel investors, we want friends and family, but some of my friends are like how, and I, I've thought about crowdfunding and it's like all these questions of what's the best way to fundraise and you're saying go to these people, do I want to go to them and say, do you know anyone who's an accredited yeah. investor? Or do but I don't worry about the, incre- to- everyone who's an accredited investor knows, credit investor comes from like how their financial status. Yeah. Don't over, you're getting scared of something that doesn't matter. But Fun- how do I, what if someone isn't one and wants to invest in us? Your lawyer or whoever is helping you will figure that out. Most people, almost no one hits that realm because you're not asking for $500. Right. You're asking for 10, 15, $20,000 yeah. minimum, and that's gonna knock most people into that realm. She can help you with that. Yeah, that's really good to know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, my, so um, we are in year four of the company, self-funded the business, and um, we're further ahead than I ever thought we would be in year four, thanks to the pandemic. Sure. Totally Changed the model. transformed yep. the business, yep. and, and we were very nimble. I am the brand, the brand is me. Yep, um, I've heard of the concept. <laughs> <laughs> and my struggle, or I guess why I'm sitting here and uh, is 
you talk a lot about like the posting how do you really create capacity right so i do a post a week on linkedin it gets a hundred thousand views right amazing great, great. fantastic um and it's driving a conversation because uh, that's all i want to do mm -hmm. it's not selling the business it's yep. not talking it's about the conversation yep. so how you talk about you know well hire somebody. right off right yeah. off the top yeah. when i hear that yeah what my immediately my spidey senses are like ah she hasn't realized that she is a content creator that happens to have this business. Mm -hmm. I think me making content is more important than anything. Mm -hmm. You don't, because you're only posting once a week on LinkedIn. You haven't gone to that perspective yeah. Yeah. of holy shit, this is that important, which is wildly easy to not see. Yeah. I get it, because I'm old enough to know where this sits. You know, for a 20 year old coming up the game, like this is like such a big deal. Like it, it, it's like the framework. And then, but for a lot of us in this room that did business before this world existed, the thought of being a content, like that's always sounded like a side dish, but it's the main dish. Mm. Now, you like me, okay, yes, I figured out that it was the main dish, but I do 15 hours a day work with no content creation. Right. What you need to figure out is the next part of like, how are you gonna make yourself make content. So then, because it's the most important thing, I was like, I'm gonna hire people to work on this. When you think it's the most important thing, yeah. you're not scared to spend $100,000 a year on two people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Like for me, and people are like, well Gary, how, and I, a lot of my friends are like, that's a lot. I'm like, how much money are you making? What do you want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, all of a sudden, like, I underpay, uh, for, to this hour, I underpay my salary at my companies because I want the money to keep feeding the company. Right. right, and so, but again, and then it gets really interesting. All of a sudden, you start, how many employees do you have? Uh, 22. I am positive on my fucking heart, the 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd most important person in the company, if they're not doing something that nobody else does, mm -hmm. if they're a second person, or a third person, right. or a fourth person that does what the others do, a, a true content on you person is more valuable than those four. So it's either a little less take home yep. on the P&L, or if you're like, Gary, you don't get it, I'm like a bare minimum and I need this for to sustain my lifestyle, no. great. Well then that's not the case, hire two people. I was a banker for <laughs> right? So, but, but, my, but I guess hire the two people, I guess we're, you know, you talk about hiring well, these young people. Nobody how in long New York it, how wants to work for $20 an hour. Yep, they do. Okay, can I, then they help me because I'll help you. I'll Ready? tell you. Make a video, Yep. post it on LinkedIn, oh. of the feelings you have about this and find, listen, yeah. a lot of these kids are right and a lot of these kids are yeah. right and are, like, when somebody says to me, fuck you, Gary, you're paying minimum wage, I'm like, I get it. <coughs> I get them. I'm like, you have an ideology that's from scarcity or abundance. Mm -hmm. It's one of those two. But I'm like, but you do understand, like, this really works for some people. Mm. Yeah. And like, I'm just following the law. Like, I'll pay $90 an hour if New York wants to make that the minimum. Right. I'm just, uh, you know, like, same. there's a lot of fucking people who want to get in the fucking door here and are willing to, like, a lot of us didn't come up with, like, like cool, I love when I get the email of, like, fuck you from Harvard Johnny. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, easy for you to say Harvard Johnny. You fucking, you, like, like, you fucking went to private school your whole life and went to fucking camp in the summer instead yeah. of work at We're Best Buy. Like, and by the way, and then there's the other extreme. That's Harvard Johnny. And then there's the other person who's, like, Fuck you, I should be getting, I, I get why, but they don't get to make the rules of life, nor do I, I'm just living. Yeah. I promise you there's two people who would rip their fucking arm off. There's both a Yale 20 year old woman, or 22 year old woman, Yale graduate, and street kid 22 year old, that would die to work for you for 20 bucks an hour doing social media content. Okay. Both one of each. And by the way, if you were building a two person team, I would immediately build it that way. <laughs> give me Yale, 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 and, Susan, and, 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 and give me street work, kid Monica. Just to do and fuck, work with me. Just to work with you. Yeah, that's where I have now, the struggle. Because, Hi, <laughs> you, know? Yeah, you know, because you get this, oh I gotta put it into the company. You are the marketing. I know. Your opening line is, I am the company and the company is me. Yeah. Mm. Couple things. Yeah. How long does it take you to make that one post, roughly, in your mind? 20 minutes. Right. If that 20 minutes becomes 40 and you're doing a podcast, mm. you make know podcasts you could get on? Oh, if, I'm on a, tons of podcasts. Well, every single one of those, you should post produce the video and that should be your content on LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah, she just doesn't have the, she's in, she was, hello, she was just on the cover of Entrepreneur. Yeah. 
I'm aware. Right. So yeah, I, yeah, I just I'm, find I'm more worried about getting her in the mindset of it. That's the notice, thing. notice how she's like, I'm like, she knows who I am. I assume you've seen some of my content. <laughs> You're aware that my content is post-production for me being on podcasts. Right. Yeah. All of a sudden, you can see the path of how to get to 15 pieces of content. Yeah. I still publicly speak for the content. Yeah. I do four Ds right. for the content. Yeah. I went to an army base in New Jersey today and spoke to them for the content. For the content. Okay. The content's the reason I'm doing it, and then all the other stuff is the nice to have, where everyone perceives the nice to have to be the thing. Mm. I don't have time for podcasts. I have time for podcasts when it gives me 24 pieces of content. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. The podcasts I'm doing now are smaller than ever because I want them to be more niche for yeah. content I'm trying to get out. <laughs> right, a female entrepreneur is gonna ask me different questions as a yeah. dude than like, right? Uh, a, BM, a skateboard podcast I did not too long ago, I did it because they're gonna ask me different questions, get me into a different zone. Okay. Got it? I got it. The other thing you can do is do open Q&A. Tea with Gary Vee and Ask Gary Vee are still what I really wanna be doing. It's so fun, you're like, you literally are helping young female entrepreneurs yeah, accomplish what you did. You're just answering four questions. They're pumped as I fuck. do it all day long. Exactly. Day, right? <laughs> so, so then right. literally have one person yeah. at Luminary filming the fuck out of you. Okay. Yeah. Thank You'll you. You'll have unlimited content. Let's Thank do it. You. You're welcome. You'll, it will be massive for you. You especially, it's going to be like, it's a grand slam. Yeah.